As soon as my computer kicks in, there it goes. Phew, had me scared there for just a second. Uh, this radio program is intended to be for informational purposes only. The information does not constitute legal advice. The law is constantly changing, and the information may not be complete or correct depending on the date your particular legal problem. Each legal problem depends on its individual facts, and different jurisdictions have different laws and regulations. Because of those differences, you should not act or rely on any information in this segment without seeking the advice of a competent attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction for your particular problem. And we have one of those on the line with us this morning. He's Marshall Criswell. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Good to have you with us here today. Um, AccuWeather says today cloudy early, then partly cloudy this afternoon. We'll see a little bit of sun. That might be the only sun we see this week, maybe a little on Tuesday. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we can't talk about the sun and uh, something that has come up in, um, I, I know we're, we're going to get to this, Marshall, <laughs> but taking the circuitous route. Uh, but we're going to get to this. Uh, solar power is becoming something that we're hearing more and more about. It's something that has come up here in Indiana County and a lot of people are really considering it. Some have already made the switch to solar power, or at least partially. And I'm sure that there are some property concerns when it comes to solar power and setting up the grid and everything. And, and I'm sure that uh, you have had a chance to explore and maybe even uh, deal with some solar power cases. Um, um, would that be the case? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it would. And, and you're right. Uh, many folks uh, are choosing to, um, to, to supplement uh, their, their home electricity with, with solar power. I know that uh, here in Indiana County, we had a solar, uh, solar power cooperative going on uh, for a while that was um, offering, you know, they had providers offering reduced rates for uh, homeowners that would, um, that would go solar. Um, but what we're starting to see now um, is uh, um, de- uh, solar power uh, development companies that are presenting landowners with uh, an opportunity uh, to lease uh, for for the power companies to lease um, land for utility scale solar uh, solar projects, uh, which which is interesting in that we hadn't seen. Um, you know, this has happened in lots of parts of the country, um, but um, uh, but in Pennsylvania, we're just starting to see this. So all of a sudden, it's not just a personal property and I want to do something for my home, but I could actually lease some of my land so that um, a whole grid can be set up, in essence. That's right. That's right. Um, so, uh, I, you know, and, and you, you, you remarked on the, on the cloud cover here, and we, we deal with that a lot here in western Pennsylvania. Um, but, uh, you know, one of, our, one of our neighbors to the east, uh, New Jersey, uh, they, they're very... Um, Similar to us, I think the, I saw one estimate that they have 2,500 uh, hours of sunlight um, on an average, and we get to about 2,600 uh, hours of sunlight on, on an average. Um, so, and, and New Jersey has really ramped up um, uh, utility-scale solar production in the last few years, so there's no reason that it can't happen here in Pennsylvania. All right, so as we think about it, and we think about leasing property for these purposes, um, I would assume that there would be zoning issues in, in some municipalities, maybe not in others. But what are some of the issues that we should consider if we're approached as property owners and said, we want to use your house to set up a solar grid or your property? Absolutely. So you're you're looking at uh, at at acreage, right? Um, I've seen um, leases offered to landowners for twenty, thirty, fifty, seventy, you know, eighty acres of of land, Um, and so you you um, you, you first of all you want to know who you're dealing with. So do a little bit of research or um, talk to someone who's knowledgeable and, and know who the, who the solar company you're, that you're dealing with uh, are. Um, there are. There are lots of these folks out there now it's, um, uh, the, that this is becoming more prevalent, and you want to make sure that it's an established company with a good reputation. Uh, beyond that, um, so there are lots of considerations, some of which um, – you know, really coincide with some of the other um, utility work, uh, such as, you know, m- most of us have dealt with, um, uh, you know, gas leases, natural gas leases, yeah. uh, obviously has been a uh, big part of Pennsylvania's uh, uh, economy for, for a long time, and lots of landowners in this area have leased um, their, uh, their property to, um, to gas operators. So it, there's a lot of the similar um, 
questions that you want to, that you want to ask yourself, right? Uh, what does this lease mean? Does this mean that they're going to start developing on your property right away? Often not. Um, often the, the lease is put in place and there is a uh, smaller nominal payment per acre that's, that's made um, on a regular basis by the, uh, by the utility company, by the solar company to hold that land. Um, in the event that they decide they want to develop it, you know, they find land that they've determined that, you know, the topography is good, the, the soil is good, um, that, that, uh, that it's a good place to put a solar farm, a solar array, um, but, uh, but, you know, they, they may not decide to develop for a while. So by signing the lease, it doesn't mean you're going to, they're going to come out and start right away. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you need to understand that and, uh, and figure out, okay, what's that payment going to be? And does that make sense for me, um, you know, to do that? Uh, and then, if they do decide to develop, uh, what's what's going to be the uh, the basis for the payment? Then, usually with the solar power, unlike natural gas, uh, they're not paying um, based on production. You know, the amount of uh, megawatts of of, elect- of electricity that are be- being generated, uh, they're paying on a on a per acre basis. So you just need to understand that and and make sure that it's something that's that's worth it for you. Would there also be considerations such as uh, granting access to the property, um, uh, what comes out of your property and uh, onto some bit of, of, of public uh, access, uh, things of that nature, lines and, and those sorts of things? Absolutely. Um, as with any any type of uh you know, production, um, it really any kind of commercial activity on, on real estate, you're going to have um, those types of considerations. Uh, you want to, yeah, you want to make sure that you understand where the access is going to be. Does this, um, does this use of your land, this solar uh, array, does it affect, affect um, any other uh, um, agreements that you have for the use of your land? Are there other rights of way or, or, um, or, or agreements that are going to be affected by this? And you've got to make sure that you understand that and you don't want to be, um, you know, getting yourself into legal trouble that way. That's interesting because if you have a, a, a lease on a land that would allow somebody to come in and, and really tear it up to construct something or to work underground on something, uh, but you've got solar uh, materials sitting there, then obviously there's a conflict and there would be problems there. Let's talk about term. Uh, how many uh, years are people generally signing up for these things? And um, uh, what happens at the end of that term with you've got that those structures, that infrastructure built on there, and, and you're just going to say, okay, lease is up, you're gone. Absolutely, and those are major considerations. Uh, how long is the pr- property going to be locked up for? If it if it hasn't been developed, if it, if it's under lease and and the project hasn't moved forward, um, you know, is is it going to be um, you know one, two, three, five years that that the company has to um, to to develop? And then once uh, if they would begin the project and actually begin to to put the panels um, out uh, down, um, how long are they going to have that lease for? Is it indefinite? Um, what, from what I've seen, uh, the lifespan of these of the solar panels is between twenty and thirty years. Um, so you know the the lease probably um, what you want to have an end date on it and not have an in, indefinite uh, lease. And then you know if they wanted to replace the panels or continue using that that space, then um, th- then you know you'd talk about a renewal at that point. Um, but the, what you mentioned regarding the end of the term, I think, is one of the one of the most important things. Um, as as a landowner. I mean, you want to be as protected as possible and have as little impact and cost <clears throat> to you a- as possible. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that that the um, the solar the solar company is properly insured and properly bonded. That's part of you know making sure that they're reputable and and that uh, they have a good uh, track record of of being stewards, good stewards of the land that they're using. Um, you know, and then uh, what happens if the project falls apart? What happens if this company goes bankrupt? Those sorts of things. We want performance bonds that are in place so that there's money there um, or the guarantee of money there to uh, to clean up the site. And if the lease just comes to a natural progression, uh, you know, and, and a natural end um, when these uh, the solar um, 
the life of these panels are done or whatever, uh, then you want to make sure there are strong terms in there that the this the solar company is responsible for uh, returning that that property to the way that they found it, removing all um, of the materials, um, and uh, and also uh, that they'd have responsibility for any uh, environmental issues that might be caused. I mean, there are um, you know uh, certain. Uh, elements and chemicals associated with the with the panels and the the equipment and things. So you want to make sure all your bases are covered, um, so that you know it, when those those panels need to be removed, that you're not going to be footing the bill or having to do any work. You know, it's interesting you say all of that, especially uh, the part about what if the company goes bankrupt? They go out of business, and uh, doesn't sometimes it doesn't matter what the piece of paper says. Uh, if they're not in business, it's awful hard to get them to go after and remove their property or uh, to handle properly the uh, disposition of everything. Uh, so it all says to me, you better have an attorney involved in this and uh, not try to go at it yourself. Um, yeah, absolutely. You want to, you want to talk to, um, you, you want to have uh, an attorney um, on your side who um, has, has done this work um, who are, who, or who at the very least has, um, has a strong grasp on real estate law and, and, um, uh, and, uh, and can help you in that regard. Uh, you know, there are so many considerations. Um, you know, in this area, a lot of the folks who are Landowners uh, that have, you know, well, anything over 10 acres of land, uh, there's the possibility that you're in the clean and green program. We've talked about clean and green before, yeah. and that's a tax abatement program, uh, provides a tax break for folks that own 10 or more acres that are uh, for a non commercial use as long as it's, you know, either vacant land or agricultural purposed or, um, or for forest land. Um, and uh, so if you own, you know, 100 acres of land here in Indiana County and, um, and you've got, you're in the cleaning green program uh, and you decide to contract with a, a solar energy producer to, um, to develop a solar array on your property, well, that's very likely uh, going to throw you out of the clean and green program because that's a commercial development of your property. Mm -hmm. People don't think of that. Having a gas lease on your property is is a little different. Um, that's been dealt with already here, but um, you know that's something that's familiar. Uh, but uh, the, having putting a solar array out there, very likely, um, I, they're they're going to determine that that's a commercial use of the property, and you you can be responsible under clean and green law. For seven years of rollback taxes on your on the your entire property, they go back seven years and say, "Okay, what's the difference between what you should have been paying and what you what you were paying?" And you're going to have to pay that all in a lump sum here because you violated the terms of the Clean and Green program. So that's something that you know that that you want to be real careful about too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so they need an attorney involved. You're that attorney in many cases. So what should they do if they want to talk to you about it? They can call me at 724-465-5826. Stop and see me in the RMP Coal Building, um, which is 655 Church Street in Indiana, or go online to www.westernpalawyer.com. Thanks, Marshall. I appreciate it. Thanks, Todd. Take care. Have a great week. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCF. Indiana County, WCCF. Indiana